Good evening and welcome to MD Model Works in association with Alclad 2, makers of the uh, most the best natural metal finishes and mill spec uh, paints for aircraft and land based vehicles. Anyway, today while picking up a model for a friend at Hanant's in Lowestoft, I uh, the lorry was being unloaded, so I asked the boss there, Adrian, we got in there, and he said, well, it's the new Tamiya's coming in. Oh, bonus. So he literally opened a box in front of me, and I popped this. Now, I've seen a few being built on um, Facebook. Didn't really pay a great deal of attention, because I knew I was going to get one and have a look at myself. But from what I can make out, this goes together extremely well. It has very, very good features and details. And it's a good twin boom aircraft, which I love the shape of. So, we're going to do an inbox review um, here and now. And see how we get on. Okay. So this is Tamiya Lockheed P38 F stroke G Lightning 148 scale aircraft series number 120 with a wingspan of 330mm just over a foot and a fuselage length of 240mm just over 8 inches. Accurate rendering based on extensive research for actual aircraft. Uh, dedicated canopy components, slim engine cowlings, wing leading edge intercoolers, curved windshield recreated, sturdy precise landing gear assembly, detailed cockpit as control wheel radio, more. Weights ensure correct balance. So there must be some weights in here as well, which is a bonus. Good idea, Tamaya. I know you do it on some your F-16s, I believe. I've seen it on a few of the others. Anyway, your number is, the number of the kit is number 120. Okay, so a quick look round the box. The front is beautiful. Uh, Miss Virginia. Virginia is in my heart, I will admit. So that would be the version I would probably make. But I would... Well, we'll talk about that in a little while. That's something we'll bring up later on. Anyway, beautiful box art. Don't know who I signed by. It looks like a Japanese artist. Not 100% sure. But this is a beautiful box art, um, really detailed to be honest, lovely drawing. Okay, so on the sides of the box we have, let me just draw you out a little bit, excuse the mess around the box, the cutting mat. We've got two different versions, we've got the F and the G. So Miss Virginia is a G and White 33 is an F. There you go. Uh, number 120 on the other side cockpit details showing up looking really nice all this is in Japanese um, I have a, my boss at work is fantastic with Japanese stuff but um, I wouldn't have a clue and we have here it's endorsed by Lockheed Martin with um, all its the copyright has all and registered copyright has all been used and it the National Museum of World War II Aviation Colorado Springs has given it three stars so that's nice okay that's a little bit different not seen that before anyway so I've not opened the box I never do before I do one of these previews or these um, reviews uh, we'll just open it up straight away put that out of the way Put that to one side, ready for the parts to go into. So, first thing we see, plenty of sprues, all individually wrapped, which is lovely. We'll go straight down, straight down for the instructions and everything that goes with that. I'll put that to one side a moment. Right, 
Okay, so we have, let me get you in a little bit. We have quite a different type of, what I would call different, I've not seen many of these. Um, I just think it's just over uh, A4 height wise, but width wise a lot thinner. So anyway, a little bit more information about the aircraft, read right before assembly, all the usual gumf. Again, um, Lockheed Martin's endorsements, and the colours, of course, in uh, sorry, in Tamiya's uh, what do you call it range? I'm sorry, losing the plot here. It's long losses. I don't want one of these um, in their uh, X ranges. Basically, they're Tamiya uh, acrylic colours. Which of course aren't acrylic because they're alcohol based, but here you go. So you've got all those there. I would obviously change those out for mil specs, and all the mil spec range is done on this one. So that's cool. Right, page one assembly, just a bit more information to begin with. Then we're straight into the cockpit. So make a choice A or B, what you're going to do. Obviously, you can get some aftermarket decals, which will come again later on. Got A or B, White 33 or Miss Virginia, and we're straight into the instrument panel, which is decals, which is fine in this scale, not bad at all. A lot of the thoroughbred modelers out there will, of course, go the um, PE uh, way and do it like that, but it looks fairly well detailed, so the, the um, underside of the instrument panel going on with the uh, compass and what have you going on then we got the floor of the obviously it's a very small cockpit in one of these cockpit going down uh, sidewalls coming in joystick going on I'm sorry yeah the joystick going on opposite wall being done on this page then we got the wing section and the box section of the cockpit going down so a lot of that beautiful detail is going to be lost because there's only a very small hole just here to go on to cut the tabs off all round and the ladder uh, if it's going to be stowed can go in cutting making uh, solid drilling holes there's a mixture of colors for the internal parts obviously like I said Alclad 2 mil specs have those in stock Side walls going on for the underneath of the uh, wing spar. I presume they're part of the undercarriage bay, uh, which I wasn't correct. Yes, I was. That's the front wheel bay. Okay, then more of the wheel bay being made up. Parts going on now. It gives you a choice to put in the drop tanks. Different drop tanks for different versions. So keep an eye on what you're doing. More holes being drilled, the wing spar going into the upper section, and then the upper section coming through. Sorry, the wing spar going into the lower section, then the upper section joining the lower section of the wings with the wing spar. Then we go on to the nose section and the cannons again, depending on which version you're going to do. Keep an eye on that. Uh, your front flaps going on side cowls on the front of the nose going on with your cannons on the end of the nose going through you can no it's just an attachment while you're doing it you've got your identification lights going in this is masking sticker so obviously there's something else in this which is cool uh, different parts going in I would say that's probably a light and another identification light going down identification lights going into the belly of the plane and the under wings going on so that's looking cool right we've got our ailerons going in no problem there and the wing tips being put on so we have the supercharger going into the, underneath the engine, or the turbocharger rather. It's again different types, so keep an eye. 
on the different versions. Then we have the air intakes going in into the, the bottom of the rear engine section and going down and on and then we come into the right boom assembly which is obviously the intake ducts going in landing gear starting off uh, more parts of the landing gear, you've got the landing gear walls for the, uh, the outer, outer wheels or the rear wheel section all looking good main landing gear going on again, that's the other side so it's all exactly the same again you've got four bays on these, four gear bays which is a bit odd, no it's only two, so what are they on about? oh I see, yeah, right so they're showing you how to, you put one side on then the other, which is okay, different, but it's very deep the instruction manual is very detailed, let's put it that way anyway, we come down, put more air coolers on with your grills going down then you bring in your side sections for each boom this is obviously the, the right boom going together then we've got underneath we've got the radiator cover going on we've got underneath the front of the boom more air intakes lumps and bumps and then we do exactly the same for the left boom assembly so I'll skip through that just exactly the same both sides obviously then we attach the booms to the wings and then start on the tail plane which is in five sections which is to me or three sections which is great nice and easy to put in some of them can be a little bit fiddly your landing gear going on two part wheels we'll have a look at those in a minute see what they're like that's your front landing gear or the nose landing gear going down like I say two part wheels we've also got two types of wheels for the F and the G model so A and B again keep an eye on the the codings and then we've got two part wheels on the rear on the boom wheel boom gang blah, the main landing gear should I say different parts all going on looking great you got to put your oleo or the the suspension oleos on all looking absolutely wonderful as it goes in then we make up some pylons and the low nose landing gear covers. Attaching those covers. Then we're on the main landing gear covers. Well, they call them covers. We call them doors. Um, two parts. So that means hopefully there'll be no uh, sink marks or ejection pin marks. Again, if that is brilliant. It's typical to Maya. Coming through, attaching them. Then we start on the drop tanks, you've got a 150 and a 300 gallon drop tank depending again on which version you choose all looking good, attaching the fuselage to the underside oh, sorry, the um, underside parts so you've got your pitot tubes, air, air speed indicators and which what have you aerials rather then we go on to um, the radio gear which is all very very detailed and very looking nice looking very nice shouldn't say that looking very good anyway then we come to the seat it looks like there are decals for the seat which is fine again in this scale although we'd probably use PE putting it all together all looking great attaching the uh, armoured part to the back of the seat the, sorry where the seat would go the seat go then goes in bit more armor plating and then we've got our little man our pilot and really really good color call outs for what you're going to do him in then we've got our canopy and as you can see from this uh, hopefully in the box there's a canopy mask set which would be wonderful if it's pre-cut if it's not pre-cut it's a pain in the butt but there you go right Oh, it's interior and exterior. Now that's pretty cool. But there you go. Right, so we've got the gun sight then being put together. The front canopy going together. Bear with me. Then we have the attached in the canopy. Closed or open. Terrific. Really good way of doing it. 
props going together no problem there and we have looks like we've got a poly cap so they can spin nice and easily and be pulled off for transport I like that idea makes it a lot easier to transport things like this and they're different left and right props hmm okay oh yeah they're different very nicely done which is cool and then we have the painting it gives you a, a, a rundown of how to paint this that and the other which is absolutely 100% fine but you'll do it your own way we always do us lot so that's the instructions right now you colour call out <laughs> this Two side, yeah. Okay, let's put the right way up for starters. This is an A4 sheet. So I'm sorry about the light, but as you can see, I've got many, many lights on in here. Okay, this is Miss Virginia. This is no, is it white one four seven Miss Virginia? Beautiful way of doing it. I mean this is a poster it's certainly almost an A4 which is lovely so basically you've got your olive drab on top with your neutral grey underneath beautiful colouring looking lovely and decal placements as well and we got white 33 39th fighter squadron again oh I do like that that sets it off so we've got sky blue propeller covers but the same type of colour apart from that that's sweet I like that that's a nice way of doing things especially on a 148 scale you expect it on something like a 136 an expensive kit right decals now this is what I was going to come to we'll get these out and have a look we've also got a mask set Looking at this, let's bring you in again. Excuse me, banging the camera all way. There we go. The masks are basic. Um, you have to paint the red in for the mouth, the shark's mouth, fine. But I can feel they're very thick. Typical Tamiya decals. So basically, what I would do with these is put them in a drawer and keep them in case you ever get short of a few stars and a few odd bits of. Uh, the decals for the air there and everywhere I would get yourself a good set of aftermarket decals because getting these to go down flat is going to be a bit of a nightmare I, some people might say that's okay but I can feel how thick they are before I even start and the carrier film is also very thick which it would be obviously some of the silver parts you'd paint anyway but yeah that's a little bit a little bit of disappointment but I expected it so aftermarket route for your decals. Put those to one side. I will just put them in. Excuse me for taking up a little bit too much time. And okay, masking. Yeah, they're not die cut, which is a shame. Pity. So, your best places of Edouard, um, top notch for mask sets, for your canopy. It's a brilliant idea. Why they can't die cut them, I just don't know. Such a shame. Right, straight on to a large section. So I'll pull you out again so we can see what we're up to. Be careful with these because they. I'm going to cut them, but they are, as you can see, stapled. So be careful not to scratch it. On the floor. No. Right, so let's bring you in, as I said, to there. Not many panel lines, but what there are, when they're riveting, 
is very very nice and as you can see it's been moulded in the form of the dihedral of the wing which I like it's not a great deal of detail on there but what is there is very nice very clean very sharp very tamaya although the plastic feels a little bit softer than the usual tamaya plastic perhaps that's just me I don't know okay next one again I'm going to cut those staples right off so we don't scratch it as we take it out so we've got the lower nose section beautifully riveted all round panel lines are lovely and fine for the scale they are probably in scale although I suppose you times that by 48 and they're going to be huge they're going to be something like that which mm, yeah well we'll it get away we have to have panel lines don't we so there you go anyway it looks very very nice let me come on to our cockpit area and again very very detailed with the side walls our little guy with his head missing obviously you can then pose the head instrument panel two instrument panels one for the F one for the G your nose uh, your nose shroud radio systems basic but very very nicely detailed still a little bit basic your control wheel detail looks really nice the little figure is actually superb he's worth putting in or well, he will hide a lot of that detail up and uh, believe me with that small cockpit you want to show all the detail you can show okay right Here we go. one of our larger sprues so I'll take it out just a little there we go okay the booms again beautiful panel lines beautiful riveting everything looks spot on to me I do like this aircraft I know a little bit about them um, it's looking fantastic the booms it's not a big aircraft for a 148 scale that's not large that is not much bigger than a Spitfire or Hurricane in length I wouldn't like to guess but I wouldn't think it's much much bigger time you get your uh, prop cover on and you a mm, little bit bigger not much but yeah she's looking lovely more detail work the turbo chargers are absolutely fabulous under parts of the engine area the turbo engine area is very very nice the undercarriage front and rear again beautifully molded very crisply molded and looking great the nose again very nicely done your wing tips yep that's your front flaps very very nice okay next one okay right Ooh, there's your two little rubber grommets fantastic for your props to spin and be able to be removed so you've got your tailplane again beautifully detailed and the underwings not the underlings the underwings again beautifully detailed the river and is gonna show up so good with some washers the props now they're different um, let me show you here let's bring you in okay if you can see this prop is angled um, like my hand so that's pointed sort of downwards and the opposite one is that way so they've got that correct which is nice all these small parts parts of the seat is their very small seat plain Jane which is what they were everything looking lovely and I've not seen any issues with any sink marks 
which is what we like to see with a new kit nowadays. Okay. Now we've got our bits of bobs sprue. Okay. Right. Let's take you out just a hair so we can see what we're doing. There you go. Right, we have our undercarriage doors looking <laughs> superb. There is no other word for this. From what I've seen so far, it's an immaculate little kit. And we've got the nose wheels. Obviously, one for the internal. We've got two types for the external. So make sure you get the right one. We've got our nose gear bays. Oh, sorry, our boom gear bays. Looking amazingly good. Our nose gear bay here. Because this is the wing spar. Again, looking superb. I'm just going to... Those pipes on here. Normally you would get a join mark across here. There is no join mark. As you can see, look. Absolutely incredible. Really well moulded and tooled. So, looking through that, everything wears, looks great. Again, no sink marks, no ejection pin marks, no flash, which is something we saw on the Revel 132nd Hornet, which was dreadful. But from what I've heard, building it is the same. Okay, right. Is these double sprues or the same? Oh, these are the same sprues. Okay, so we've got a double up, so we only need this one. Right, smaller sprue. Let's get you in there. Let's see, you can see a little bit better. Okay, your 300 gallons, your 150 gallon drop tanks, um, your air intakes, your rudders, uh, antenna, nose cone for the prop, everything looking gorgeous. Everything's got some detail on it that you can just pick out. Three different types or two different types of wheel again, depending on your version. I know I keep saying it, but make sure you do check which version you're going to do. But that is glorious, absolutely glorious. Right, and I know this one, this is not a waste of time because I know this kit goes together well. I've got people who tell me this doing what I do is a waste of time simply because, well, you don't show how it goes together. The guys on the Facebook, they'll show you how it goes together, and it goes together like a dream. So, we now have our glazing. Now, just have a look through myself first. A quick look again for, oh, blimey. It's hard to say how good and crisp this glazing is, to be honest. But if you see as I'm going across that piece of tape, which I use for a marker, there is no wobble. On a very tight shape, Tamiya have done an absolutely fantastic job. Everything is crystal clear. The gun sight, everything you look at. Mr. Tamiya, that's one of the best glazings next to Eddard I've ever seen. So put that away. That is crazily good. And stuck to the bottom of the box for good reason. I can't so much so I can't even get them out. But we have weights. Um three of the biggest ball bearers I think I've ever seen in a kit but that is a great addition absolutely fantastic addition so again well done to mine let me just uh, 
There we go. Put them back in the box safely. I'm ready. I won't have the pleasure of building this. This will go to Mr. Mick Bear, who's going to build it, I hope, pretty soon. I'm just going to do a review on the kit. Anyway, let's take it out. Let's see if we have one last look at the box. That was my impressions of the Tamiya Lockheed P38 FG Lightning. And I have to say, it looks to be one of the best kits they've ever brought out. So, Mick, I hope you have fun building that. Now, obviously there are different things you can do to this. So, this week at Alclad, we have released, if you wish to do this in an all-metal for the Pacific version, or a later version that comes out, you can use the new Alk 126 High Shine Aluminium, which is fantastic. And just to show you quickly what I'm talking about, there's the Corsair, I shouldn't have painted with it, but I did. We've got our High Shine on this side, I've used just grey primer, and on this side was black, gloss black primer. So you've got gloss grey and gloss black, so you can see. So if I build one of those, I'm going to use, well, I will build one later. I hope Mick's going to build Miss Virginia for me. But I'm going to use this on that. So Alt 126 High Shine Plus Aluminium. Now this is going to be available at Telford for the first time. That's the only time you better get it. Okay, so thanks for watching. Sorry it was taking so long getting a new video up. But we're away again now, so hope to see you all at Telford soon. Have fun, be safe, peace all.